Okay. <sighs> okay, we are going to try this. Go live. Will it work? Dude, I don't know what's going on. I was like about to smash my phone into a million pieces. It works. Let's go. Oh my god. That is crazy. So what was what, the original problem? I have no idea. I literally tried everything. And then I eventually, I went on my Android phone and I just deleted the cache. And then I was like, oh, it's working yeah. now. And then it didn't work when you tried to join. So I just deleted it off my Android. I was like, fuck, maybe that worked. God, okay. what a nightmare. Did you, want to try on, did you want to try on yours one more time? No, dude, this is fine, honestly. This is perfect. Okay, word. I don't want to okay. <laughs> risk it. So funny. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely save the video then so you can share it too if you want to. Awesome. Um, but how's your day, brother? Good, man. How's your day going? It's Outside right, of this I crazy could... technical issue, I mean. Yeah, right? Um, I just got off work at 5.30, so <clears throat> it was convenient that I was like, oh, we can hop right onto this. Um, and then all that crazy stuff happened. So for those of you that are going to watch this later, um, Joe had like the weirdest Instagram meltdown that I've ever seen. So basically, <laughs> we would request to join on each other's lives and it just wasn't allowing us. So it would show that the request was sent, but then it would say that we were unable to join. So I literally was sitting here. I like called, I like asked my girlfriend to come in the room and I'm like, dude, and she just kept going live on, she has like a dummy account and it finally got it to work. I don't know what made it work though, but I'm just happy it did. Well, shit, at least it works, man. So yeah, yeah. for um, how long have you been like in the fitness realm and like the fitness coach realm? Um, so I've always been like athletic and I played sports. I played soccer for like 30 years, but uh, like I never got into like taking bodybuilding seriously until probably like four years ago, I ruptured my Achilles and I was like, all right, well, like I used to be like 155 pounds, like more like soccer, like kind of fit. But I'm like, I'm never doing like a high impact activity ever again. So then I like really gotten into more of the bodybuilding because I feel like there's less chance to hurt yourself if you're like intelligent about your form. So sh short answer long, like by seriously, like three, four years. Yeah. So are you coaching now? Like, are you a personal trainer? No, I just do it like for my own like uh, vanity more or less. Okay. So I'm in a similar boat as well. So um, I do do like coaching and training, but I'm not like certified to do any of that stuff. Um, I think that like the whole certification thing is almost like kind of bogus. You know what I mean? As far as um, like you have to pay money to get a certification from us to, to be able to tell people how to live healthy. And it's almost like yeah. that doesn't really make sense. That almost kind of sounds like you're selling something that should be free. Like if you look at people and people that are healthy um, and obviously know what they're doing, like I, I feel like those are people that you should obviously, obviously listen to. Whereas yeah. like, for example, you have like, and I, I used to teach phys ed, so I'm not like talking trash on like teachers or phys ed teachers, but like, for example, you have like the fat phys ed teacher in high school or middle school, and they're like telling you how to be um, in good shape. And it's like, does that really carry much water? Ugh, dude, I hate that. Like, uh, I, one of the first personal trainers I ever like trained with was like a, he's kind of, he's like a fat dude. He was a linebacker at like, I think he went to U of, U of Iowa. So I knew he knew what he was talking about, but in the back of my mind, I was always like, you're barely fit, bro. Like, I don't know. He was good at lifting, but I'm, I'm with you, man. Like, I don't even know if half the people that are like influencers on here are even certified because at the end of the day, like it's an online certification. And again, no shade against trainers or people teaching, but like the information's out there. You don't need like four letters at the end of your name to, to be able to like get or give the information.
Exactly. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, and I'm glad that we agree on that. Because um, a lot of people, you know, what I mean, we're just like, I don't want to say brainwashed, because then it makes it sound like we're conspiracy theorists, like woo woo. But we're like, conditioned to believe that those are the only kind of people that we can listen to nowadays in society. Sure. Um, when it comes to like doctors or really anything like, oh, unless you have like these letters behind your name or in front of your name, your opinion doesn't matter about um, fitness or drugs or, or anything. It's like, really, like we have access to the internet. And as long as you're like not a total idiot and like you don't like just see something on the internet and just believe it, like at face value, because obviously not everything on the internet is true. Um, you should definitely be able to do your own research. And if you do it, especially when it comes to fitness, and if it works, then obviously that's something that um, that you don't need like a, a doctorate degree to be able to understand. Sure. Yeah, I actually have a buddy who he is getting his doctorate in like sports something or other. And he definitely like has a shitload of knowledge, but just the degree isn't doesn't qualify him as an awesome trainer. Definitely gives him a lot of the information, but he's also like a enthusiast in that world, right? So I think you if you merge the two, you definitely get a really well rounded person who can give you like great info and train you and stuff. But like someone like a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer, I want them to go to school for like a hundred years so I know they're like really good at their job. <laughs> but like a trainer, sure. dude, like I can like I follow Ross Dickerson and like, I don't know if he's a trainer, but like, he's got cool workouts. Like Julian Smith, I do the daily pump. I could care less if he's a trainer. His workouts are great. And he's like super jacked. You know? Yeah. I, I 100% agree. I follow, um, two really big time, like fitness gurus, um, Brandon Carter and Greg Gallagher. Oh dude. I, yeah. I like Greg Gallagher. Think... I don't think either of them are certified in anything as far as like being a phys fitness trainer or personal Brandon trainer. Carter. Um, didn't you win like Mr. Olympia? Am I thinking of someone else? I don't know. I don't really, I don't follow either of them that closely, but I know that again, I don't think. Oh, King Keto, that dude. It, like nutritionist or anything, but I do know that their workouts rock. And I know that what, like the advice that they give guys and their workout programs work. Is that the King Keto guy? Yeah. Dude, that guy's a really good businessman. I don't think he's certified, but he like, I actually, um, I took a call from like one of his like sales rep guys just to kind of see like what they're pitching and like. Me too. His dude, and I didn't do it because I'm like, you know what? I don't have bandwidth for this shit. Like I'm so busy as it is, but there, I'm sure he's making a ton of money and selling those like coaching programs and good for him, dude. Yeah, no, I I also did it because they did like a free consultation. You know what I mean? So I was yeah. like, I mean, I'll listen to it. And he gave me free advice, which was awesome. Um, because I did just get started with this whole like YouTube and Instagram stuff. Um, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but you have like 500% of the followers that I have. <laughs> Dude, I like literally, and I spend like time on it. That's the thing. Like, I'm like, fuck, I need to get more fit because I feel like I could grow faster but i'm literally like every i spend like an hour or two a day like looking through people who i think would like be interested in my content based on like someone who's just posted and i'll like follow some people like some shit comment like fuck. it's like being dudes unless you're like on like the most gorgeous human being in the world like it's much more of a grind like it's definitely like a space where women like own the air and they can grow like much faster like my girlfriend's got For a fitness sure. page and she posts like a couple times a week from our workouts and she she's really good at editing but she gets like mad like she's got a third or a fourth of the amount of followers i have and she gets more likes on her posts that's crazy yeah. Dude, it's so easy for women in this industry because like not that i'm like generalizing or anything but all they really have to do is wear like yoga pants and take like a mirror selfie showing their butt and they'll get like <laughs> 500 likes you know what i mean they'll get like 100 followers in a day like you and i cannot do that you yeah know? it's like it's definitely like a visual medium where they like like definitely you know are able to be yeah like to your point and like i'm cool with it like i'm and right wrong or otherwise i love being a dude i feel like I, it's way better i've never been a girl i agree i would trade me i wouldn't trade getting more likes on instagram to like be a girl like <laughs> being a dude is the shit 100 <laughs> percent i'm i'm with you um 
but yeah, going back to um, what you were saying about um, growing your Instagram. See, mine has been real slow because I won't really put in that much time to it. So I will like post something. Um, and I do try to post pretty often, like every other day. Um, and then I'll do lives like this. I'll also like make my own YouTube videos where I just kind of like ramble about whatever fitness thing that is on my mind, whether it's like macros or nutrition or fasting or workouts. Um, but that's like my main go to right now, because I the whole reason I started this is because I wrote a book on fitness and fasting um, about a year ago. And I just haven't uploaded it yet because I'm like, I don't really have the like base to like i don't have an audience you for wrote this, a you know book? what i mean like I could... yeah that's awesome dude that's awesome that's a thank huge you. yeah thank you yeah it's about fifty thousand words too like it's not just like a little program um so i'm really proud of it which is why i wanted to start all this like instagram and youtube stuff because i was like i could sell this book to my friends and family but like how far is that going to go? I might sell like 10 copies max. Like I might as well try to get like an audience out here for this. Um, because, you know, I wouldn't have wrote this book, written this book if I didn't think that um, it was stuff that people wanted to hear and, or stuff that people needed to hear, I should say, sure. because I mean, you probably get this and a lot of people in the fitness industry do. Um, I was so sick of like seeing the mainstream fitness magazines. They're like, you need to eat chicken breast and broccoli like six times a day, every day. Um, you need to go to the gym twice a day, every day. Like you can only skip a workout like once a week. And I was like, this is totally BS. Like this is not how I do it. Like I go to the gym three times a week and you know, I eat the foods that I still love to eat within reason. You know, I don't eat a whole box of freaking cupcakes, oh, man. but then I stay like super lean all the time and it's like yo all this stuff in these like fitness magazines and the mainstream like food and fitness industries it's all just to get money and obviously you can't sell like fasting you can't sell skipping workouts which yeah. is why that's a good point yeah which is why I never thought about like that, that yeah do. yeah that's a really good point like that is not feed a consumer economy like Less is less is not going to fuel that. Yeah, that's a, I've never thought about it from that perspective, actually. Yeah, so that's what fueled me to get started in all this, because I mean, what does the food industry care about? They're worth what, like billions of dollars, you know, and they don't give a shit about your health. They care about you eating more food, <laughs> which is why if you walk down the, the um, like breakfast cereal aisle, you're going to see like Jolly Ranchers cereal. Or some yeah, garbage. I always like, like that. buy organic cereal and it tastes like shit. Like my palate is so conditioned for that like high fructose corn syrup stuff that I ate as a little kid. And I don't right, eat right, real right. much, but I'm always like, you know what, I'm gonna be healthy about it. And I'm like, this tastes like crap. Just because it's like doesn't even compare to the science stuff that you're talking about with that's like engineered to like prickle your taste buds the perfect way. Yeah, big time. It's such garbage. Um, and I mean, I'm not like totally against eating that stuff. You know what I mean? Like I'll still go out and have like beers with my friends or brunch or like fried foods occasionally. Um, but to eat that kind of stuff all the time, like every single morning, and then to be in the mindset of like, oh, yeah, breakfast, the most important meal of the day. Like it's just such beer. That's the worst one, dude. If I eat breakfast, I'm tired and slow. I never eat breakfast. Same, yeah. It's genuine. It's genuinely super toxic because, like, if you think about how ancient humans ate, do you think they were waking up in the morning and like eating first thing in the morning? Especially not like sugary foods, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And their metabolisms well, didn't crash. Obviously, when you see drawings of like ancient humans, they look super lean and ripped. And of course, those are just drawings. But you have to understand that those obviously have some like historical. Um, I want to say like evidence or like factually based as far we as got a question here. That. Do you work out while fasting? So I actually don't like fasted workouts. Um, and they've done studies that showed that there's really no benefit. The calorie difference winds up netting almost the exact same. So when you work out fasted, you do burn more fat, but then your hunger hormones go up higher and you need more to satiate yourself. Whereas if you work out with calories, you'll be more satisfied. 
So I, I don't like fasted. I have shitty workouts, but some people like it. But calorically, it's like a bosh. It doesn't matter. What are your thoughts so, on that? Yeah, so as far as fasted workouts go, I don't like doing fasted workouts if I'm over 24 hours fasted. If I'm less than 24 hours fasted, I like doing fasted workouts. Um, and you're right. That like a morning workout, like, you'll like go fasted. But if like yeah. you've gone like a whole day, you're like, I need to eat first. Exactly. So as far as burning calories go, you're right that like it burns the same amount of calories. But the thing is, um, if you're doing like heavy cardio, you're going to make yourself a lot hungrier. Whereas I'll do my fasted workouts and I'll do mainly like anaerobic lifts like lower reps and higher weight and then that doesn't make you as hungry afterwards so then you still get the more like you get the additional benefits out of the fasted workouts so there is go, um, so you have to make sure you're doing a workout that won't like trigger that hunger hormone then that's exactly so i don't hit, like, i don't hit like cardio during those fasted workouts because then i'll get super hungry and then like you said then you binge eat and then what was the point of the fasted workout? Yeah, no, Triple it's the amount of calories you burned. It's uh, when I read that, it made me feel better because I hate working out fasted, but I don't like eating early. So if I do go work out in the morning, I'll usually just, I don't know, maybe have like a protein shake, but I take what my secret is I drink coffee and I take an Adderall in the, during the week. So like I'm not even hungry. So it's like I'm not like even purposely fasting, I'm like just not hungry. So it's, I, I swear, I'd probably be super fat if I didn't take out at all because I fucking love food. My family's Italian. So I grew up just like pounding food. And I'm sure, were you an athlete when you were younger, like high school or? Yeah. So like, yeah, you work out like three hours a day. So you can literally eat whatever you want. So it's hard to like break that cycle when you, like I sit for nine, 10 hours a day now. I still work out maybe an hour, hour and a half a, a day most days, but it, mm -hmm. it pales in comparison to running around like a maniac when you're 16. Right. Just looking to see if we got any other questions. In here. Lillian Link's mommy. I like the name Link. Is that Link after uh, like Zelda? So what, uh, give me, what are some of the, like the main like takeaways from your, the book that you wrote? So some of the main takeaways um, are definitely in a slow integration to fasting. So, you know, intermittent fasting, it has been like kind of a fad. I don't want to say fad because like people have always been fasting, but like the term and the actual like diet of intermittent fasting, like going 12 to 16 to 18 hours fasted um, has been really popular since like 2012. Hey, Sorry, she's so, like Lincoln is from Abe Lincoln. Sorry. No, you're good. So I kind of took that and took it a step further because a lot of people are talking about intermittent fasting and that's easy to get into, but I progressed into more of prolonged fasting and um, even even into doing dry fasting. So basically- <laughs> Do you guys fast from sex? Yeah, we're both virgins, dude. Smoke, yep, talk, Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do so, so you do one meal a day type things or like what are you trying to draw like 36 plus hour fast like what are you doing so i will do omads one meal a days um in the summertime to get like super lean because obviously like that's when i'm gonna have my shirt on it off and everything more often but i don't do omads all year round because you can crash your metabolism like that because like Obviously, if you are consistently like on a day to day, every single day basis, expending more calories than you're ingesting, then your body's going to go into a catabolic state or you could go into like starvation mode. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then your body will latch onto your body fat and be like, oh, I need this because I'm going to die. Um, so I so for that reason, I won't do OMAD every single day. Um, but even if that does happen, like in the summer times, I've let that happen to myself before where I've done one meal a day every day for like three months. Um, and then the way that you fix that is obviously you figure out that you stop losing body fat and that's obvious when that happens. And then, um, you simply eat at caloric maintenance or, um, for a couple weeks, or you just eat at a caloric surplus, um, for a couple days a week and then your metabolism just resets itself. 
So nutrition is my, like my weakest thing. Like I've got my sleep pretty solid. My workout routines pretty solid. Like I'd say those are good, but yeah, like I, I like, I, I'll be good for a while and then like I'll fuck up. So like my, I've not been able to crack in a while. I'm at 170. I'm like plus or minus 175. I was like, what the hell is that? And I figured out it was your cat. Oh yeah, dude. My cat's a psycho. Um, but yeah, so I like, I like will hit 173 and like start feeling a little lean, but then I'm like, Oh, I can eat more. And then I'll like pop back up to 180, start being like smart about it again. So I don't know. I, and I'm super inconsistent with tracking macros. Do you have any advice on that? Those kind of like, what are you doing for that type of stuff? Yeah. So as far as macros go, so my whole, the whole purpose of my book is making it as easy as possible, which is kind of the vibe I was, I was given off at the beginning of the call when you asked me about it. So as far as tracking macros goes, I used to do that and I was just a total slave to it. Like I would use the apps like my net diary and my fitness pal and I would track my calories and my macros. And it was to a point where I would spend like at least an hour a day, like doing that total. And I was like, this is terrible because this isn't, you know, something I can do for the rest of my life. So what I would recommend to people is do it for like six weeks and then stop, never do it again. Because after doing it for six weeks, you'll, you'll get an idea of how to ballpark your calories and macros. Like now I can look at a plate of food and be like, oh, that's approximately um, 900 calories or whatever. Or, oh, mm -hmm. that's approximately like 20 grams of protein, you know. And as long as you can ballpark it, like that's good enough. Um, because even the apps, like the MyNet Diary and the MyFitnessPal or whatever they're called, they're just ballparking it too. Unless you're literally them. like weighing your food on a scale, right? Then, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And that's extreme. Like you can do that if you want to, but just know you don't really have to do that unless you're like a serious bodybuilder. Like if, if fitness is your life and you like you are like competing in bodybuilding shows or powerlifting uh, competitions, like you probably need to do that. But if you're just like the average lister lifter and you just want to like look your best consistently year round and maintain like low body fat, continue to gain lean muscle um, during your workouts, you don't have to do that. And again, you can if you want to. Some people love that. But think about it from like the average person perspective. Like most people do not want to be a slave to their fitness. Yeah, no, it's it's like a lifestyle that you have to like make a choice on. But right. the macro thing is like yeah, it's a that's a good perspective though. Just kinda like getting it so you can ballpark it. Yeah, dude, I fucking love like like ice cream pasta, like I'll be Same. good for a while, then I'll cheat and like it's ah, it's annoying, dude. Like I flirt with the idea of just like, you know what, I'm just gonna take like some crazy fat burner or trend or something and then just get shredded without trying. Never done that, obviously, but definitely considered it. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely considered, you know, taking steroids before, but I would never like actually do it, you know? Um, but um, as far as like nutrition goes, I don't really think about it as far as um, like cheat days because what I'll do is, you know, I'll eat junk food essentially whenever I want to, uh, within reason. And as long as I'm not like totally binging, like every single day, it's not going to affect my overall physique or my overall health. What do you, uh, do you have like a cheat day or do you like a lot like specific days where, or like meals that you can be shitty? No, I don't think about it that way at all. Um, because fasting is such a lifestyle for me and my, like just my diet in general is such a lifestyle. And like I meal prep, I meal prep all my meals. So, I know what I'm eating for the whole week. So like if friends or my girlfriend or my family want to have brunch or I want to go out and have drinks on the weekends, like I can do that and it's not going to change anything. It's not going to affect anything because my routine stays the same all the time. So I okay. can have those days like that. Like little spike it I goes back to. down to like that baseline and evens out over time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. How do you build? So this would probably be helpful because I, my thing is like, I'm super disciplined in like 99 100 out of a hundred areas of my life, except the nutrition. Like, how do you suggest someone slowly builds that habit to where they're got it under control and they're not like a slave to their cravings or whatever? 
Yeah, so I recommend meal prepping. Um, do you live by yourself? I live with my girlfriend. Okay. So what I do is I meal prep all my stuff because I hate cooking. It makes a mess. You got to clean it up. Um, you got to go out and get groceries all the time. What I'll do is I'll go out and buy all my groceries for the whole week, sometimes like a week and a half's worth of groceries if I think they'll stay, like, if it's stuff that'll stay good in the fridge for long enough, you know, because I don't want my food to get, like, moldy or gross in the fridge. That's disgusting. Um, but I'll go out and I'll meal prep it. Um, I'll make it all at once, put it all in the crock pot um, or on the stove, however I make it. And then I'll put it in Tupperware and just, just keep it in the fridge. And that way I know you know, at five o'clock, I can throw this right in the microwave or right in the oven and this will be ready. I don't have to cook this. I don't have to, because it would be so tempting for me to like, oh, I'm just going to get Wendy's or I'm just going to go get uh, McDonald's or Chipotle or Chick-fil-A if I didn't already have my meals meal prepped. But because I already have them all in the fridge and ready to go, I'm like, oh, I have to eat these because if I don't, they're going to get moldy. And like, I already paid for them. I already cooked them. Like, I'm not going to allow that to happen, you know? Yeah. Well, and actually, it's just like so hard to live in a world with an instant gratification. I like, totally get that. Like, I'll meal prep, dude, and I'll waste like half of it. How many meals are you making? Are you making like three times five meals a day? Or five times five yeah. days, three meals a day? Yeah. So I'll make, so for two, I eat two meals a day. Um, so I'm still getting like 18, 19 hour fasting every day. Um, so. I'll eat one meal around um, one o'clock and then I'll eat my next meal around uh, like seven. So whatever that comes out to, but yeah, I'll cook. Um, I, I don't really have like a number, but I'll cook like chicken breast, um, pork chops, steak. I'll do pasta and casserole. Those are typically my go-tos because um, those will stay good in the fridge for like seven to 10 days. Um, and then like I said, I can throw those straight in the oven to heat them up, like the, the toaster oven, or I can throw them in the microwave um, with, like, a baked potato, and then they're ready to go. Do you do, like – are you a sweets guy or are you, like, a savory, like, salty? Oh, yeah, I'm a savory, salty guy. Okay. Do you snack or do you, like, no snacking? Like, Hell, yeah, I have snacks. Bro. Absolutely, I have snacks. So I keep, I keep snacks in the house. But I, I only go for them after I've already eaten. So once I'm okay. full from my meal, then I'll eat my snacks. And that way it, it keeps me from, like, binging on an entire, like, bag of chips or box of, like, coconut cookies. I got these, like, coconut cookies from Aldi's, dude. They're so They're good. good. I, would eat, I would eat an entire sleeve if I didn't, like, eat my meal first. Dude, I'm a, yeah, I'm a big, um, like, I love sweets. Like, lo luckily, like halo top and those enlightened shit those are pretty good and they have good macros but uh yeah dude like i don't know i definitely i got the uh you know jeff nippert is he's like one of the like he's probably like one of the better like guys who does like science back stuff he just released an app that's super cool that i've been using to help track my macros because i want to hit my protein and not be like and like i'm trying to get down to 165 i'm 173 now you know, like every time you hit like a new lower weight, you're like, I'm not ripped yet. Like I thought I was going to be ripped when I was this weight. Like actually like two, when I got really into bodybuilding, I was like super jacked up. I actually did a bunch of gear. I was like over 200 pounds. I was like huge, but I was like more like big. I wasn't like aesthetic. And so that's more like what I'm interested in now. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, so you were juicing at the time? Yeah, I was like. My buddy, a lot of my buddies run gear, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll try it. And I was super mm -hmm. strong, which was fun, but I was, like, puffy as hell. Like, I looked like shit. Like, I'd rather be aesthetic than strong, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you were when you were juicing, um, what were your workouts like? Were you just, like, doing a ton of volume? It was, like, yeah, volume, and then, like, so I do, like, the big five lifts, like, super heavy, like, deadlifts as heavy as possible like destroy my back heavy right uh squats shit like that and then um for like auxiliary stuff i do super high volume like more hypertrophy for like arms or um, you know like traps shit like that it was yeah. cool being super strong but like i'm 37 i'll be 37 this year so like i'm not interested in 
look being strong anymore because I don't want to like wreck my body. Right. Do you do more like volume for hypertrophy or are you more like low, low volume, high weight? Yeah, so I love doing low volume, high weight um, for the sake of having that aesthetically pleasing physique. So, um, and it also gets me out of the gym in like 60 to 90 minutes too. Um, so I focus on key lifts, like closed chain movements primarily. So I love doing like squat. I love doing um, dips, weighted chin ups, weighted pull ups. Um, those are huge for um, muscle growth and also for hitting PRs. Like I'll hit a PR on those lifts almost every single time, which is great um, because fasting promotes muscle retention. So Wait, how's that on those lifts, I focus on like key lifts, like um, incline, bench, um, dumbbell, shoulder press, or sometimes barbell press. What, um, how does that uh... build my shoulders and my upper chest? So I still get that really nice like V shape, you know? Dude, that's like uh, Greg O'Gallagher saying the incline bench and the get you that nice beat, right? Yeah, I got how the you. How does fasting promote muscle growth? Uh, that doesn't seem that seems counterintuitive to me. Right. So it would be because it doesn't promote muscle muscle growth; it promotes muscle retention. So when your body's in a fasted, I mean, you can still grow muscle when you're fasted. Absolutely, don't get me wrong. Um, but when you are in a fasted state, your body. Holy shit, man. Sorry, I'm in Baltimore and the ambulance is driving by super loud. So when your body's in a fasted state, and especially when you're working out, it, it almost tricks your body into thinking, um, oh, he right now is working hard to get to his next meal. So we need to retain this muscle so that we can help him get to that next meal. He's obviously working hard to get to food. So it's like tricking your body into retaining muscle. Which again, like I said before on the call, it works, but not if you are in a caloric deficit every single day for an indefinite or extended period of time, because eventually you will run your body into that catabolic state and your body will think that you're actually starving. But yeah. I hope that makes sense as far as how fasting does promote muscle retention. That's, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. But then you get to that point where your body's like, okay, you're, we need to burn some of this easier to burn stuff. Yeah. But again, then you can still continue to fast. It's just important that you get those refeed days in. You eat at a caloric surplus um, for like a day a week or you eat at caloric maintenance for a week or two, um, which you can still do while intermittent fasting. You just eat bigger meals, which I'm sure you'll agree with me is freaking awesome. Who doesn't like to eat bigger meals? No, oh, it's so fun. That's what probably my thing I like the most about fasting is I'll get like super excited. I'm a big foodie. So then I'll be like, like last night I got like a bunch of like little big bowl. It's like decent quality Chinese food. And I like went ham on like two giant portions. It's like my only meal of the day. But like, it's super fun to like, just not like binge eat, but almost like binge eat so you can hit your yeah. calories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can do it too when you're fasting, you know, because you can do that and like eat a 2000 calorie meal and be like, oh, I'm actually at like maintenance right now. Um, which is great because like the average person cannot do that, but I absolutely love like going out and eating like a metric ton of like Chinese food or Mexican food is so much fun. Get like a double steak burrito from Chipotle or go to like the Chinese buffet and just pig out, have like four plates. Dude, I haven't eaten yet today. That sounds so good. What do you suggest for like people, um, calculating their caloric maintenance? Like, I feel like apps and stuff, but it's like everyone's body so specific based on their genetics yeah so genetics do affect it but only so much um like for example i hate it when people are like oh i'm i'm obese um or i'm overweight because everyone in my family is obese so it's passed down genetically like i don't get behind that like no it's not it's it's habitually passed down yeah through your family like you got those eating habits from watching them you know you didn't get fat because they were fat you know to put it in layman's terms that's not how body fat works now can that work with like male pattern baldness yes absolutely so i don't want to say genetics doesn't play a part at all because that's simply not true um but as far as counting calories goes um i would say again just ballpark it i would use an app um just google you know your height and weight um and then 
if you have like measurements or if you know how much percent body fat you already are that could take into account um because like if you weigh 300 pounds and it's all muscle versus if you weigh 300 pounds and it's all fat your caloric maintenance is going to be different um but if you get those numbers based on like height and weight um and even age could have something to do with it too uh so like the more information you can get in there the better then that's going to help you to get a more accurate ballpark estimate yeah the like height weight thing is like like i'm like fat for my i'm 5'9 175 i'm not like a fat person but like if you look at one of those charts i'm like i'm like the fat side so yeah it's like definitely plays into that how much do you think genetics yeah. plays in, into i don't know like being able to get aesthetic and building muscle and shit like that so you know about all the like endomorph mesomorph and ectomorph right yeah which one's the one that like yeah. ec endos like the one that gets fat easier yeah okay so and so for those of y'all guys that don't know that are going to be watching this later endomorph um has an easy time gaining weight has a hard time losing weight ectomorph has an easy time like staying really lean but has a hard time gaining weight, whether it's muscle or fat. And mesomorphs are the type of people that can go to the gym, fart on the bench press, and gain like 10 pounds of muscle. Ah. So um, some of it has to do with genetics, but I don't, again, I, I don't play too much of a genetics part into it because a lot of it can just be like your appetite. Um, because, for example, the endomorph might have more of an appetite than the than the ectomorph but mm -hmm. they might like let's just say they have the same parents for example um so genetics in that case would be totally thrown out that wouldn't make sense right to say that they could have different genetics but one of them um is an endomorph and one of them is an ectomorph that wouldn't make any sense so a lot of it has to do with like i said just eating habits and just lifestyle as well so for example if you find yourself sitting down all day um and then just eating and then going to bed your your rate that you burn calories every day is going to be way lower than someone who is on their feet all day um even if they're not necessarily um working all day like let's say like doing construction or something that would be like extremely active even if they're just standing up they're going to burn way more calories than you um when you're just sitting down and so then you might find it way easier to gain weight than they would even if you guys eat the same amount of food in the day. Do you do how much cardio do you do? I feel like I've, I hate None. Cardio, I man. literally never do You don't cardio. do any cardio? Just like head, like lifting to get your body rate uh, heart rate up? Yep. And I'm I'm super lean. I actually don't think I could be any leaner. I'm gonna show you guys at the risk of looking super vain. Oh yeah, dude. Do you know what your body fat is? Um, I don't know the exact number, but I could guess it's probably somewhere around 6% because I do have yeah. some body fat like on my cheeks. Yeah, that's fucking hard to maintain, dude. Like, I don't think people want it harder just to maintain as sub 10% body fat. It's very, very, yeah. it takes some dedication. But that's the thing, though. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand is that it's not hard once you have a lifestyle that promotes it. Like, for me, it's not hard. Because I fast and this is my lifestyle, you know? Um, so I honestly, like, it's, I don't want to say it's easy for me because that makes it sound like, oh, like, you guys don't, you know, it makes me sound like I'm better than you. But once I'm you not. build a habit, it becomes simple because you're just repeating that same, like, positive. Exactly, habit. exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's what my book is all about. I didn't, I swear I didn't ask you to come on here so that I could market this. No, I mean, this is, I'm glad you mentioned it because honestly, the shit that you're like excelling at is like probably my, the weakest part of my like fitness, like, you know, armory. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I don't want to seem like I'm perfect either. Um, because like, you know, there are still things in my fitness journey that I'm still working on too. Like for example, my calves are tiny. <laughs> Um, I don't Dude, I got have, high calves. I don't want to have huge, it. like, yeah. monstrous calves. But, uh, I, you know what? That actually leads me to a good question. What do you do with, like, stubborn muscle groups like calves, traps, and forearms? Um, especially oh, now that you're yeah. not, especially now that you're not on gear anymore. Yeah. I think with what I've found is that 
some muscles respond better to, and I don't know if this is me or like the muscles in general, but I think about like a calf muscle, like a calf muscle is made to do lots of motions that support your body's weight. So in my mind, do I need to use like a million pounds to grow my calves? Probably not. I probably just need to increase the weight a little and then add my body weight and then my calf's going to respond there. Like, you know, like the dads who are like kind of fat, but have like the best calves in the world. Like that's yes, just them walking wow. around on their kind of fat bodies. So like, yeah, I'm like, okay, exactly. let me grab like a 25 pound body. weight. And then I just do a lot more like calves is like, I'm like, okay, that's a high volume muscle. Um, arms similar. I think arms respond better to hypertrophy. And then something like, uh, like the big motions, like shoulders, I think want bigger weight because that's like a, a quad wants bigger weight like those are the muscles that are going to do like your like heavy like i need to like move a big object activities uh triceps i find respond really good to heavy weight so i'm thinking about like what was my body designed for and then where where can i translate that to lifting a weight and yeah, i honestly think a lot of point. genetics dude like uh, my cousin has low calves, so his calves look enormous because the muscle starts like at the base of his leg. Mine are like higher, so even if they're huge, they're still gonna look half as big because they're it's just smaller on the leg. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I have a friend um, in high school, um, and he had like the the torso of a man that should have been like six, five and the legs of a man that should have been like five, two. <laughs> um, and so his, his upper body was absolutely jacked. And then he had these like short little, like almost dwarf legs. That's weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, everyone's built different. You know what I mean? Cause I have and, like a long, I have like the legs of a tall man and the torso of like a short man. So like, I'm glad, I mean, I, I'd much rather that than both be short, but like, it is weird how like that works. Yeah. My legs are definitely longer. Um, like I'm definitely, so let me put it this way. Your height is supposed to be the same as your wingspan. My yeah. wingspan is not as tall as I am. My arms are definitely shorter than as tall as I am. Um, so most people are not built perfect like that and that's totally fine, but that's why you'll find some people in the gym that are like, holy crap, that guy's, you know, forearms look amazing. Or that guy's, you know, neck is like, you know, cause like, how are you going to work out your neck? I guess you can, but like, you don't see anybody doing that. Dude, I don't work um, out my neck, but the daily pump, he's got like neck workouts on like the off day, but I'm like, I don't want like a jacked neck. Yeah. <laughs> but some people to your point with that, that head thing. And you're like doing this thing with, with the, like, with band the band. In your head. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes I'll do stuff with like an exercise ball just to get that like range of motion and mobility mm. because like my neck is very small as compared to like my shoulders, which are huge compared to the rest of my body. Mm. Um, not saying like, oh, I have the biggest shoulders, but like my shoulders are like my biggest muscle group by far right now. But that's because I intentionally target them to be like that for that like aesthetically pleasing V-shaped look. Um, mm. But again, I, I don't want it to take away from my neck. Like I don't want to look like I have this little chicken neck um because my shoulders are so nice so sometimes i will do neck work but that's, it's like how yeah, you that's get your point. Neck. and it goes back to my I, uh, point of like some I, people do is... have that yeah well, you say, like, well that might i was gonna say some people do have that and it might just be because of the way that they're built yeah so when they do like certain other lifts like let's say they do trap raises um it might hit their neck different than it hits ours just because of the way that they're built i uh clench my teeth at night I like have to wear a freaking mouth guard so I don't like destroy my teeth. And I literally think that works out my jaw and my neck, like without trying. Mm -hmm. I got one of those like biting balls, like the exercise balls. That's supposed to help. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I use it about once a week. It's um, supposed to give you like a nice but, like this situation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely have a nice jawline, but I like growing the beard out because, you know, I can. Um, so... Um, I will use the exercise ball to bite on, but during my workouts, I developed this terrible toxic habit of like squeezing my teeth together yeah. during my super heavy lifts. And even my dentist told me like, I am starting to get like receding 
gums like just on top of like one or two of my teeth. Did you have like, braces as a kid? Did you have braces? I did. I did. Yeah, you got nice. Your teeth are really straight. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But yeah, I got to like be careful of that because I don't want to wear a mouth guard in the gym. Um, <laughs> because it's a terrible habit that I started like a couple of years ago. But it's like, I also don't want to destroy my teeth. <laughs> yeah. You know, from squeezing my teeth together. So you, um, do you do like I strong did. lifts? Like, what, or do you just make up your workouts then? I know you mentioned working on like the big, the like big compound lifts. Yeah. So I got my um, ideas for lifting from Grego Gallagher from Kino Body. Um, so I do focus on um, reverse pyramid training. I do yeah. some, I do some uh, rest pause training, like for, for key muscle groups like shoulders, for example. Um, but the thing about rest pause is you can't do those and then skip workouts. Like if you do rest pause exercises and then you skip a couple weeks in the gym, you might lose those gains. But if you're doing reverse pyramid training exercises and you're fasting and you skip two weeks, you might be able to come back to the gym after two weeks and still be able to hit a PR, um, which is yeah, why I really I like the that, uh, pyramid. The mm -hmm. training that is more like hyper hypertrophic volume based, those gains you lose like right. instantly, like those strength gains, you get like yeah. wider, slower, but like you s maintain that hardness instead of just being like jacked after your lift. And then the next day you're like, Oh, I'm small again. Yeah. But I do love you. getting like a sick pump. About that. Was that, I'm sorry. I was, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, so I like I, I love like leaving the gym with like a sick pump, but like a lot, I think a lot of that is uh like you're just gonna chase that pump forever versus like a slower, like wider growth. That's kinda I think I've been focusing on less volume, higher weight. It's way less time in the gym and I don't get bored now. And then uh like I've been you don't leave as like pumped up, but like the lifts like gas me so much harder, dude. Like I'm at like a squat weight now where I'm like pretty uncomfortable and I like almost blacked out the other day, which I like in a weird way. I'm like, oh, okay, this is a good weight. Like I, I'm getting a good workout. Right. Yeah, no. Um, cause I, when I was in college, I used to like in between semesters, um, I would go to the gym like every single day, like seven days a week. And I would do like the standard bro split, like, I'd have a legs day, an arms day, a chest day. Um, and I would get this, like you said, this absolutely sick pump. Like my arms have never been bigger than when I did that. But at what cost? Like if I skipped two days, I noticed that I was like noticeably smaller. Yeah. Um, and it's just because it's just a bunch of blood weight in your muscles. It's not actually like muscle mass. And of course I was getting stronger, but um, like at what cost? I was an absolute slave to my fitness and I knew that I couldn't miss workouts or I would lose all my gains. I got that from uh, Greg O'Gallagher. He, he said something about like dudes who go on vacation all jacked and then like a week later, they're like tiny again because they didn't work out. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Do you take creatine? Yeah. So I have like a love-hate relationship for creatine because a lot of people will use like crap store brand creatine that is like total garbage or people will drink creatine um, like powder and then not drink enough water, which like obviously will destroy your kidneys. Um, mm. But I don't, I don't hate creatine. Like I, I take a pre-workout that has creatine in it. I take a post-workout that has creatine in it. Occasionally, I don't do it all the time, um, but I do it, you know, when I feel like it because I don't feel like I have to take supplements, but sometimes I just like to because sure. I get a $75 a month stipend from work for health supplements. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. I might as well use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I don't like have a thing against creatine and it does help you to keep a pump um, a little bit better. Uh, so I do like the way that I look when I'm using creatine, but there's natural creatine in foods too. So it's not like you're taking this mystery drug. What about you? Yeah. I remember when I was in high school, people were like my, one of my buddy's brothers, he played football and he was like on, cre on creatine and we were like, dude, you're taking creatine. Like he was like doing an illicit drug, but it's naturally occurring in your body. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm like the same way as you, man. Like, I feel like when I take it, I retain more water, and I like, I like looking bigger. But then I feel like I'm fluffier. So I like, I'll go on it for a while. I'll stop taking it for a while. I don't know. I'm like love hate with it. Yeah. So the 
it's really nice when you're super lean and you take creatine because hold up bro i'm on a video it's super nice when you're on um when you're super lean and you're taking creatine because then it really helps like your muscles to pop more like they look so much better mm. as like when in the winter time and i have like a little bit more percent body fat um and i'm i'm taking creatine and then yeah you do like get that puffy look but when you're super duper lean like sub 12 sub 10 percent um or like even sub eight like i am right now and you and you take creatine again make sure you're doing it safe don't take like a ton of creatine um I recommend like taking less than even it recommends like on the, like, let's say you're taking a store brand creatine powder. I recommend taking less than it recommends on there. Um, because you don't want to get to a point where you're taking creatine and then you're dependent on it and you stop. And then all of your, all of your gains that you had from that, like just go away. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. I never, I think that's what it is. Like right now I'm a little, I'm like, cutting again and it does make me look i feel like it makes my it like hydrates my fat cells or something i don't know if that's actually happening but that's like my i don't really drink anymore but when i was a big boozer i would always get so freaking bloated the night after drinking when i was on creatine right oh yeah dude that's super toxic for sure um but yeah, I mean, I still go out and have drinks and stuff um, on the weekends. I'm not like totally against that, but I also don't really like like getting like hammered anymore. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a uh, drunk undergrad anymore. Yeah, I, uh, fuck. I'm, it's like, I used to be a huge partier. I was a bartender for like, at one point in my life for like five plus years. So I was getting after it, but I, I don't know. I like, uh, I'm so fucking lazy. Like all I do, I work, I work out and like, I just want to like lay on my couch and watch TV. Like if I could not work out and be fit and not work out and have tons of money, I would literally probably spend one year laying on my couch watching TV. So like, I don't know. I just don't get the same like joy out of those things anymore. Like partying like I used to, I wish I did cause I miss it. Like I, it was so fun. I feel like the older I get, the less things I enjoy. But like being in shape is awesome. <laughs> but like the gains you get, like the intrinsic value of like being healthy and fit is like so valuable, right. dude. Like oh, for sure. being like fit, like you're probably like one of the fittest people at your job. Like I'm super fit at my job. And like, it's not, I don't, it, it's not about like being more fit than other people, but like I'm so much more confident in everything that I do. And I think the physical appearance and then also like the mental gains as well as like the discipline those like intrinsic things that you're not like looking at someone and going oh they're fit they must be really confident those are the things that i really like from like the fitness thing oh yeah dude absolutely i love being able to like look in look at myself in the mirror and not like be like oh i love myself i look so great um <laughs> but at the same time i like to be able to look at myself and be like oh i'm really happy with the way that i look right now yeah dude um, whereas like before i was lifting and i i, I was like skinny fat and my shoulders were like super small and my chest was like shrunken in. I would look at myself in the mirror and be like, oh, I hate this. Like, I look like trash. Like if I was a girl, I wouldn't want to talk to me. You know what I mean? Hey, I'll take. <clears throat> Hello? I just, I, oh, okay, up? thanks for so in. I'm gonna try, cause I borrowed, um, not her, she was not. Okay. So just real quick, I guess. Let me know. Oh man, I'm like ordering so much shit on Amazon. I don't even know. But yeah, um, if you need to hop off, I gotta grab the door. But this is fucking awesome. Maybe we should definitely. Yeah, dude, we were on for an hour. Out. This is a really good. How to get my to phone to work? <laughs> At least you learned something today, right? Yeah, God, I appreciate you being so patient. If for anyone who watches this after, like I'm retarded with time zones, and so we missed <laughs> our first meeting, and then we finally like, made like an hour, and I couldn't get my shit to connect for. It was almost a half an hour where I was literally on the internet and I don't know what fixed it, but I'm glad it worked out, man. This was super fun. Hell yeah, man. I really enjoyed our talk. We'll have to do this again sometime because there's still so much more that I would love to talk about with you um, that you brought up that we just didn't get a chance to talk about. But being that it's been an hour, we can definitely get off. Anything else that you'd like to man, say? Man, that was an hour. Gonna... That flew by. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Anything else you'd li like to say? Anything you want to promote here before I, before we get off? Because, again, I'll post this to my IG and YouTube. Yeah, afterwards. yeah. Uh, follow my Instagram, Joseph R. Jennings. And then I'm going to be actually 
I opened a Amazon FBA. Where we're going to be sourcing like booty bands and uh, blood flow restriction bands. So um, if you're interested, I will send you some. You may not be. I don't use booty bands, but my girlfriend's really into them, and I think they're a cool product. So, but yeah, man, this is fun, dude. Like, we should do, like, um, some YouTube stuff, too. Like, I have, like, a really cool podcasting setup in my office, um, and we could, like, record, like, some full videos and stuff. That'd be really cool. I'm definitely down. I was actually thinking about getting more into podcasts lately, too, seeing as how, obviously, this is basically a podcast at this point. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude, sounds good. Um, I'll let you go, and uh, enjoy your night, brother. All right, appreciate you, dude. I'll see you next time. Yep, peace.